Hi everyone. This video will be about a very common problem in medicine, which is swelling of the legs or lower limb edema. There are a few reasons that I have chosen this topic for presentation. Number one, it is very common. Whether you are a general practitioner or a specialist or nurse practitioner, there is no one day that passes and you don't encounter one of these presentations. Number two, it can be quite challenging to approach these patients as there are many pathologies that can manifest as swelling of the legs. That's one of their manifestations. And in many occasions, there are many competing pathologies contributing to these problems to make it more complicating and confusing. Here, what I'm trying to achieve is that by providing a visual framework and categorizing the main causes of this problem into big sections hopefully provide a simple framework to approach these patients and come up with a proper diagnosis and later on management. If we look at the cross section of the leg, there are many structures present, including bones, and muscles, vessels, subcutaneous fat, skin, and lymphatic system. Any pathology affecting these structures can cause swelling. But to make it easier, we can categorize the causes of swelling into five big sections. The two most important ones are venous hypertension and the side effect of medications that the patients are taking. Venous hypertension alone is one of the most important contributors to this pathology, to this presentation. And here we have got chronic venous insufficiency and obstruction. Venous hypertension will be the subject of this specific video. The other two sections are lymphedema, which is any pathology affecting the lymphatic system, obstructing the flow of the lymph, which causes accumulation of the lymph in the interstitium. Then we have got lip edema, which is excessive and abnormal accumulation of the fat cells in various sites in the body. And probably we can have another section which we can put liver failure, uh, severe hypothyroidism, mixed edema, sprains, and bone fractures here in this category. I will not talk about this category as the causes can be quite self-explanatory. Now let's talk about venous hypertension and look at some of the real cases in this category. In the category of venous hypertension, there are two main pathophysiologies contributing to the swelling of the legs. The first one is obstruction. Any pathology obstructing the flow of the blood from periphery towards the heart can cause increased pressure inside the venous system and subsequent edema. Here we can point to some examples. The first one can be a thrombus or blood clot that we call DVT or deep venous thrombosis. This can cause a unilateral, sometimes painful swelling. So unilateral means in one limb. So depending on where the clot in the leg is, for example, if the clot at this level, this part of the leg becomes swollen and painful. Of course, here we ask about all the usual culprits of the deep vein thrombosis. The first one is any recent history of travel or surgery, any active or prior cancer. It is important to ask about cancer in the past as cancer can recur and, and the first manifestation of recurrence could be either a DVT or PE. So it is important to ask about even cancer in the past. Any prior DVT or PE in the person once you have had a thromboembolic event in your lifetime, the chance of having a second one is much higher. So it is quite important to ask about prior DVT or pulmonary embolism. Family history of DVT is quite important as it, as it can run in the families and use of oral contraceptives. The other example is, for example, a tumor. If you have a tumor, if you have a mass in the pelvic area, pressing on the iliac veins can cause swelling in, in that limb. Or if the uh, tumor presses on the inferior vena cava, 
can cause swelling in both limbs uh, of course this is much less common and it is usually the thrombus is accompanied by the tumor in the area the other big pathology that we can categorize here is heart failure and you might ask how heart failure is an obstruction heart failure is actually a pseudo obstruction to the flow and it causes bilateral swelling of the limbs mainly due to the significant fluid retention as you know in heart failure we have got two main mechanisms causing retention of the fluid of course the first one is the pump failure uh, or or heart failure itself which by failing it causes ineffectiveness of the intravascular volume so although we have got enough fluid inside our system the effective intravascular volume is reduced when this effective fluid is reduced the kidneys come into play they sense this as a dehydration and they start to retain the fluid and sodium so they add to the problem by retaining the fluid increasing the intravascular volume and by the force of gravity where this volume moves moves towards the periphery causing more lower limb edema and swelling so although a heart failure is not a true obstruction but it is a pseudo obstruction and can be categorized here another pathophysiology which can contribute to venous hypertension and lower limb swelling is valvular reflux or incompetence what we call chronic venous insufficiency this is a very common problem about five percent of the adult population do have this problem and out of these about one person can go on to develop venous ulcers if we look at the cross section of the vein in our system we see that they all do have valves the main function of these valves is to keep the flow unidirectional so the flow can only move towards the next compartment and not backwards one of the main mechanisms helping the movement of the flow in the venous system in the lower limbs is foot pump we know that around these veins we do have muscles when we are physically active or exercising these muscles contract and they push the veins by this pushing they help the movement of the blood forward and at the same time by having these valves it prevents the flow going backward so here we can see that the flow comes towards the valve it pushes the tip of the valves together and closes it shut and prevents flow from going backward now any pathology affecting the valve these valves can cause problem as you can see by thickening of the valves they cannot come qu come together quite nicely and there is a gap in here and the flow can escape backwards this is what is called venous reflux or valvular uh, insufficiency or incompetence now there are many pathologies causing these valvular problems one of the main ones is aging of course the older you are the higher the risk of chronic venous insufficiency sedentary lifestyle and obesity are two big ones which can contribute to chronic venous insufficiency smoking it can also it, it can contribute to chronic venous insufficiency as well as other things that you are aware of long hours of sitting or standing so it is extremely important to ask your patient about their job if they have been for example cashier or taxi driver for many years 40 years 50 years that can definitely contribute to lower limb edema and later chronic venous insufficiency prior trauma it is extremely important to ask about the history of prior trauma as an example i can mention one of my patients a 70 year old man who was going through chemotherapy he did have a swollen right leg for many years and he was being investigated for the cause of this with multiple investigations including echocardiogram and doppler exams uh, looking for dvt but 
Asking him about the history of trauma, he mentioned that about 30 or 40 years ago, he has been involved in a significant motor vehicle accident and his right leg has been in the cast for about 7 months with multiple fractures. So this can definitely down the track contribute to chronic venous insufficiency as well as damaging the lymphatic system causing lymphedema. So he did mention that after this, he slowly started to develop swelling of that limb. So initially, he didn't mention about the trauma as he was thinking it was not relevant, but definitely questioning about the history of trauma uh, prompted him to mention this history, which was important to find the cause of the swelling. Multiple pregnancies can also contribute to later chronic venous insufficiency in the legs. Family history is quite important as the patient comes to you and say, my mother, my sister or aunts, they all had this problem. It clearly runs in the families and history of prior DVT. We have a condition which is called post-thrombotic syndrome. Out of the people who develop DVT, about 20 to 30 percent can go on to develop post-thrombotic syndrome many years after their DVT and this is due to the damage which has been done to the valves inside the veins at the time of their DVT. So it is extremely important to ask about prior DVT. Now let's quickly have a look at some of the features of chronic venous insufficiency or venous hypertension. One of the first complaints of the patients is heaviness in the legs. They come to you complaining that they feel heavy in the ankles and legs. Usually it is worse during the evening. In the morning they feel much better after waking from sleep. But as the disease progresses, heaviness is present throughout the day. This is one, one of the first complaints of the patients in chronic venous insufficiency. They can develop telangiectasias initially and later on can go to become varicose veins. So these are telangiectasias which come in very, very different forms uh, as you can see. And later on they can have varicose veins. So varicose veins is the um, uh, increased pressure in the superficial venous system. You can have chronic venous insufficiency with or without varicose veins. They go on to develop dermatitis. Dermatitis is quite important as it can lead to itching, scratching, and scratching can lead to venous ulcers. So it is quite important to pay attention to dermatitis and treat it as required to avoid venous ulcers. They can slowly go on to develop edema which is pitting edema, which can involve the feet causing pedal edema as well. This is quite important as in some other conditions like lip edema, we do not see pedal edema. They go on to develop hyperpigmentation of the skin. And the reason they do develop hyperpigmentation is that as the pressure inside the venous system rises, red blood cells start to escape from the system into the interstitium. So inside the interstitium they start to disintegrate, leave and they leave behind a substance called hemosiderin. And hemosiderin is what is causing the hyperpigmentation of the skin. As the disease progresses they develop a condition which is called lipodermatosclerosis which is thickening of the derm which is the skin and a lipid layer of the skin so basically a skin becomes rubbery and hard in that area i will show i will show you some examples of this uh, later on you can um, see evidence of the ulcers or healed ulcers the ulcers that have been present and now they are healed usually Elevation is helpful in this condition as opposed to some other conditions like lipedema or sometimes lymphedema. And it can range from being asymptomatic to severely painful in different patients. This is a 75-year-old man who presented for a routine checkup. 
he is uh, two years post coronary bypass surgery during the checkup he mentioned that lately he has been experiencing heaviness in the left foot and ankle and by the night the left ankle and foot are quite sore and painful and itchy he does not have this problem on the right side and only on the left side let's look to see what we can see in his physical exam we can clearly see that he does have some hyperpigmentation and discoloration of the skin in this area he does have shiny skin due to edema in the left foot and if we look closely we can see the scar of saphenectomy removal of the saphenous vein for his coronary bypass surgery so he most likely has a developed chronic venous insufficiency or early features of chronic venous insufficiency due to the damage that he has had to his venous system as he doesn't have this problem on the right side by the way we do see some scaling and early features of dermatitis which are most likely contributing to the itching so as mentioned he does have early features of chronic venous insufficiency that's when he does require help with treatment to avoid further progression and ulcer formation this is another great example of chronic venous insufficiency a lady in her 60s who has been working as a secretary for over 45 years as has a bmi of 45 so she does have two big risk factors for chronic venous insufficiency one is her sedentary lifestyle and job involving long hours of sitting and the other one is obesity with a bmi of 46 so here we can see that she does have lipodermatosclerosis which is thickening of the skin and fat layer so in this area the skin was quite thick and rubbery she does have significant hyperpigmentation and discoloration of the skin and also she does have significant swelling of the feet which is usually worse in the evening and during the summer with hot weather remember hot weather can cause venodilation so swelling is usually worse during the summer so you have all the features to diagnose chronic venous insufficiency in this case this is another interesting case which was referred for the first time with this presentation in the legs a 75 year old man who has been working as a taxi driver for over 50 years smoking heavily since the age of 15 and leading a very sedentary lifestyle as you can see he does have three important risk factors for chronic venous insufficiency and just this history is enough to click this diagnosis in your mind he did mention that he has had this coloration of the skin for many years he used to get ankle and foot edema usually towards the end of the day and at the end of a shift but not usually in the morning but he never had venous ulcers until two months ago two months ago he required hospitalization for an acute episode of heart failure he had developed atrial fibrillation two months before his admission to the hospital but he refused any sort of therapy and treatment until he developed tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy and acute heart failure with resultant significant lower limb edema so he already has chronic venous insufficiency which we know can damage the skin and with the added edema of the acute heart failure he could easily get breakdown of the skin and venous ulcers he was started on heart failure therapy and reverted to sinus rhythm and as the edema subsided his venous ulcers started to heal so as you can see the treatment of his venous ulcers here was the treatment of heart failure one accepted theory about venous ulcers and why these ulcers develop 
is the theory of leukocyte entrapment. So as the venous pressure rises and the leukocytes start leaving the venous system, moving into the interstitium and the small capillaries, they become trapped and they start to release proxidases and proteolytic material and substances causing breakdown of the skin and resultant ulcers. This is sort of the current accepted theory about the venous ulcers. And now while we are talking about the venous ulcers, it is important to know that 20% of venous ulcers may have an arterial component. So if this person comes to you after two months and says that my ulcers are not healing, you should strongly suspect arterial insufficiency going along with venous insufficiency and refer him to a vascular lab to be um, tested for arterial disease because you don't want to miss the arterial disease especially considering the fact that he has been a smoker heavy a smoker for so many years This is another case of a person with significant lower limb pitting edema. He's a 78 year old man who does have chronic right sided heart failure for many years. Despite this, he has not developed venous ulcers, most likely because there is no underlying chronic venous insufficiency. There is no skin discoloration, there is no hyperpigmentation, and there is no evidence of lipodermatosclerosis and he doesn't have many risk factors for chronic venous insufficiency he has been a non-smoker and he has been physically very active and compare that to the previous patient who was a 75 year old man taxi driver with heavy smoking and in one episode of acute heart failure he developed chronic he developed venous ulcers because of the underlying chronic venous insufficiency and the last case to illustrate the importance of the recognition of coexistence of chronic venous insufficiency and heart failure and how it can alter the management this is an 80 year old man with chronic heart failure in a very well compensated state and completely asymptomatic JVP is not raised, his lungs are clear, he is on maximum medical therapy and he does have a CRT and basically feeling quite well. But as you can see, he does have significant pitting edema. For this pitting edema, he was given large doses of diuretics. He was actually a bit clinically dry but the swelling was not changing. Here, if we look closely at the skin, we can see that there is a significant discoloration of the skin in this area and also in the foot. And we can see that he is sitting on a wheelchair. He has actually been wheelchair bound for about 10 years, mostly due to frailty. Of also he is still able to walk around the house unaided but most of the time he is on a wheelchair so he does have some features of chronic venous insufficiency on physical exam and he does have significant risk factors for having chronic venous insufficiency so the edema and skin changes here are mostly due to chronic venous insufficiency that he has developed on top of his heart failure so more diuretics here is not going to help his lower limb edema what is going to help treatment specific for chronic venous insufficiency which are mainly compression therapy and leg elevation as well as good skin care to avoid venous ulcers so in this video we discussed one of the most important causes of lower limb edema which was venous hypertension in the next video i will briefly talk about lymphedema and lipedema and more discussion regarding the side effects of medication causing swelling of the legs 
please remember to subscribe to be notified when the videos are ready and uploaded and i hope you have enjoyed this presentation